I'm at Perth's magnificent Kings Park, enjoying the stunning flowering plants on show. And what goes hand in hand with flowers in our gardens? Bees, of course. But when I say bees, most of us think of the honeybee. But if you stop and take a close look, our native bee species are nothing short of fascinating. I'm meeting Kip Prendergast, a passionate native bee researcher. So when people think of bees, they usually just think of one species, the European honeybee. But honeybees actually aren't native to Australia. We have about 2,000 species of native bees in Australia. Many of these haven't even been described. But this is an amazing part of our biotic heritage. They're really important for our native flowers because they've co-evolved with them over millions of years. How are native bees different from honeybees? They're not social, they don't live in big social colonies. They're mainly solitary, so that means that each female can reproduce. They collect nectar and pollen, and then the females build a nest, put the nectar and pollen in there, lay an egg on it, seal off the nest, and that's the end of her parental commitment. And that's the same for all native bee species? Not all native bee species. So there's degrees of sociality. So some live in groups of three to ten, and they do provide some care of their offspring. Then there are 11 species in Australia known as the sugar bag bees or the stingless bees, and they are eusocial, like the honeybees. So they do have that queen that reproduces, and all her daughters are workers and help the queen out. For her PhD, Kit has been installing bee hotels in gardens and parks across Perth. There are a number of them located here, in the bushland of Kings Park, that we can take a look at. Oh, wow. OK, we've got four occupied bee hotel nests, and these are occupied by the mega chili bees and the ones in the resin bee family. So they cap their nests with resin, and you, if you go to a marry that's weeping out all that beautiful, bright red resin, and you look at it, you might see a native bee going there and collecting the resin, and that's why it's doing it. It's not getting it for food, it's getting it to seal its nest. And so what they do is, in a nest, they might have a number of cells. So they go collect nectar and pollen, get enough, and then put it in the nest, lay an egg on it, then seal it off, often with resin, and then go at it again, and they might create anywhere from one to 12 nest cells in there. Then they seal it off because they need to protect the babies inside from the elements and from parasitoid wasps. What makes a good bee hotel? So a large proportion of native bees nest in small cavities created by wood boring beetles in nature and trees. But these are in short supply, especially in urban areas, because lots of the large, valuable trees are cleared for urbanisation. We can try and replicate their natural habitat by creating bee hotels. They're very simple to make. You either get a block of wood and drill holes in it, or get some bamboo, bundle it together, and put it up at about eye level. Now, an important thing is the diameter of the holes. Many native bees are quite small, so they'll use holes that are between three millimetres to a centimetre. Anything larger than that is too big. The native bees won't use them. The small holes are preferred by the Hylaean bees, commonly known as mast bees, in the genera Hylaeus and Meriglossa. And then the larger diameters, about seven millimetres, these are the major favourites for the mega chili bees. And that's what made these ones. So this is a Jacksonia species, and it's part of the Fabaceae family, commonly known as native pea plants. This is a favourite among native bees. You can't really go wrong with Fabaceae. They love most of the genera, so Jacksonia, Davisia, Gonfalobium, Hardenbergia. And this is visited by the mega chili bees, so the ones that will use your bee hotels. And it's actually not really preferred by honeybees, so that's it means we've got a resource here that's really good for native bees and they don't compete with the honeybees for it. Well, I've got Hardenbergia growing throughout my garden, so I'll keep an eye out. Awesome, yeah. Out of the bush and back into the botanic garden, Kit points out some other plant species that are enticing to native bees. Now, not all plants that are promoted as bee-friendly are actually attractive to our native bees. However, a good rule of thumb is native plants 
and some ones that you can plant in your gardens, low herbaceous cover, include native daisies in the family Asteraceae and Scavola, commonly known as fan flowers. Okay. There's plenty of suitable tree and shrub species also. So a key family for native bees are plants in the family Metaceae. So genera like Kinzea, Callistemon, Melaleuca and the Eucalypse. You can't go wrong with them. And they're really important for native bees because many native bees are specialised to forage only on plants in this family. Where's your research leading kit? So in South West WA, this is a biodiversity hotspot known for its wildflowers. But we know very little about the native bees, which are in a mutual relationship with the wildflowers. In particular, we don't know how they're responding to urbanisation. What plants do they visit? How important are the patches of remnant bushland? That's what I'm hoping to discover so that we can better protect our precious native bees in the places where we live, work and play. So keep your eye out for native bees visiting your garden. And if you want to help encourage them, build a bee hotel and plant suitable native flowering species. It all contributes to increasing biodiversity.